Hi guys, History Writer here. Sorry about my prolonged absence, but uh, now I'm back. I'm ready to go, ready to start building again. Uh, life got in the way, so I had to uh, miss out on uh, finishing up the last build, the Night Fighter build. Uh, it was kind of a bummer, but uh, now I'm excited to get back into the swing of things with the uh, 70th anniversary D-Day uh, build. For this, I chose to build the uh, Douglas uh, C-47 Skytrain. Let's, well, uh, I think it's one of the coolest aircraft uh, that we ever built, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, let's first of all talk uh, about the uh, C-47. It uh, was originally the uh, DC-3 Dakota built by Douglas. It first started out in the early 1930s, 1933, I believe, as the DC-1, uh, which was the prototype, and then it evolved into the DC-2, which was uh, the first uh, iteration of the family to go into uh, mass civilian aviation, uh, made famous, you know, by... Uh, Pan Am uh, for uh, one one of the airlines for sure. Uh, it then uh, about 1936 evolved into the DC-3, and about that time the, uh, the military needed some kind of uh, transport uh, to uh, haul cargo and uh, important personnel back and forth, uh, and so they adopted the uh, DC-3. And they turned it into the C-47 Skytrain. I think it is one of the coolest aircraft ever built because it had been the most versatile transport. You could use it to uh, transport, you know, important personnel. You could use it to transport cargo, and it evolved into uh, transporting the paratroops made famous by uh, the invasion of Normandy, uh, D-Day. Uh, it actually got its start uh, carrying paratroops uh, about a year earlier with the invasion of Sicily. The uh, DC-3 dropped uh, about 4,000 troops behind enemy lines to help out with the invasion of Sicily, but, uh, you know, everybody knows it from D-Day. So, let's uh, talk a little bit more about it. Uh, it was a, a twin engine uh, powered by the uh, uh, Pratt & Whitney R1830 Twin Wasp. It uh, had a lot of power. Uh, it could get up and go. It could haul lots of stuff. It could. It had a pretty good service range. Uh, now, you know, it, it's still in service in some countries. Uh, we still use it here in the States for uh, firebombing, uh, for training uh, smoke jumpers. Uh, <coughs> excuse me and even for giving uh, rides for tourists. It went so far as to see, uh, actually stayed in active service till through Vietnam. It was our first uh, AC, uh, AC gunship. Uh, they, they put uh, a couple of miniguns in the DC-3 and used it as our first uh, ground support spooky. Uh, anyway, um, it is such a cool air, airframe, so iconic and so memorable. Uh, in a few moments, we're going to actually go to the workbench and review the uh, do an open box review kit of uh, the one that I chose. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy it, and uh, we'll uh, see you at the workbench. Hey guys, history writer here. Welcome back to uh, my workbench, and here we are. We're going to start a review, uh, opening and review of the. Douglas C-47 Skytrain, or DC-3, or Dakota Mark III. Anyway, here we go. Let's take a look at it. It is the uh, 172nd scale Italeri kit. It is the officially Boeing licensed product, as we can see here. Uh, it looks like we've got, uh, let's see if I can make it there. We've got, we've got decals for four different versions. The uh, Great Britain, United States, uh, and I believe France, and uh, Free China. Anyway, it also says we've got the super decal sheet and colored instruction sheet. Let's see if I can bring that into focus there. There we are. All right. Great looking box art. I mean, you know, DC-3, what an iconic aircraft. Ah, there they all are. There's ours, yours, the French, and oh, 
I lied, it was the Italian version. Sorry about that. Well, of course, Italy, they'd have to have the Italian version. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have on the inside here. Let's go ahead and set that up there. All right. Let's look at the instructions here real quick. We've got all different languages. Nice big sheet, as you can see. Let's see if I can bring that. Oh, there are the decals. So let's take a look. Open it up, uh, big first page. Okay, so we've got all the colored uh, colored uh, markings and instructions for the pink guides. So we've got all four different variants there. Let's open up here. Okay, it looks fairly simple. Our parts break out there in the simple warnings. Don't do this, don't do that. Shame on you if you do this or that. And one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, quote-unquote, simple steps. Looks like uh, it's fairly... Uh, Fairly simple modular construction. Um, not too much interior detail, but uh, oh darn, oh well. Uh, I was hoping to find a good 48 scale with the paratroops, but uh, you know, say la vie. So, instructions look nice and clear. We'll see how uh, how they turn out. Uh, doesn't look like there's going to be too much uh, confusion there. Let's uh, take out, take a look at the decals here, real quick. Okay, they are a little sticky, uh, so they probably have really good tack. It looks like we've got the U.S. variant here, the Italian here, French there, and all of the uh, 1944 D-Day invasion stripes. So that'll be uh, pretty slick to try out. I've uh, done invasion stripes once before. Um, but I painted them on freehand, so it'll be interesting to try out the decals. Uh, not too many other extraneous decals, so it looks like it'll be a fairly simple build. All right, oh, looks uh, looks pretty nice. So let's put those off to the side. All right, everything is all bound in one uh, one baggie. Um, everything looks okay from the outside. Uh, I don't usually like having everything all in one because that just gives a chance of more things to get lost and or broken. So let's uh, cut this sucker open and see what we get. Okay. Now, as I was explaining earlier before, the DC-3 is one of my favorite aircraft. I think it's just so cool. It's got a beautiful look to it, and it's so versatile and so such heavy duty. Uh, I got to go inside a couple of them recently, and man, what a neat airframe. I hope I hope one day I'll get to fly in it. But anyway, let's take a look at the sprue here. Really, really, really nice uh, panel lines. My goodness, I don't think. Uh, I have seen uh, such detail here. Let's see if we can uh, bring it up a little bit closer there. Does it focus? Uh, you can see it a little bit here on camera. Uh, yeah, but you can see just a lot of panels, lots of engraving. It looks like there's going to be a lot of pre-shading, a lot of pre-shading. But uh, no flash, none that I can tell. Uh, no injector pin marks. Let's take a look on the inside. Oh, yep, there's some injector pin marks on the inside, but they uh, didn't go all the way through to be visible on the outside, so that's a big deal. Um, yeah, no interior detail. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, looks like we just got the windows, so uh, in any case, most of that will be enclosed up and won't be able to see too much of it anyway. That's not too bad. Uh, the engines... I like the engine detail on that. That's really good for a 70 second scale. This is turning out to be uh, quite the detailed kit for a 70 second scale. I am impressed so far. Um, looks like the instrument panel doesn't have any instruments on it, so hopefully there's a decal for that. Let's double check here right quick, and no, there isn't. Okay. Well, found that one. Bummer. And let's look at here. All right, this looks like more seating for the inside. Okay, so there's some more detail coming out. Uh, 
web seats for the uh, paratroopers and inter uh, internal bulkheads with the equipment, but uh, no instrument panel detail. Well, that's the sh that's a shame. Unless unless it might be part of the clear parts. Could it be? Could it be? No, it isn't. Okay, well, that's a bummer. Strike one. Uh, but you know, 70 second scale, no real big deal. Uh, internal. Let's take a look at the other one here. Let's look at the wings. Okay, a little bit more uh, ouch, uh, ouchy on the wings here. You can see where the uh, injections were made. There's a nice big crease there's coming off there. So you can see where they are injected and it looks like crinkled or cooled a little too fast. It's not as bad injector uh, pin marks on, on the wings here, but uh, anyway, that should be lost uh, those blemishes should be lost with the priming and painting of it, so I'm not too concerned about it. The uh, flight deck floor isn't too bad. Uh, ridge lines there, I don't know why they have those since you won't be able to see too much of it, but no complaints. Uh, where the pilots and co-pilots sits, they've got uh, seat detail, but no, uh, no cockpit detail. That's a bummer. Okay, looks like we've got the uh, ray dome there and the radio. Okay. All right. You can even see, this is cool, on here. Let's see if I can bring it up there. There we go. And there you can see there and there. It's the fabric, uh, fabric wings. So that, uh, or the control surfaces, excuse me. So that's really cool that they actually modeled that. Let's see if it's on the tail here as well. Oh, so it is. Nice, good uh, texture for the fabric. I'll say this about Italeri, they've got some really nice exterior detail. It uh, reminds me, I think that they are partnered with uh, Academy. Academy's the same way. You get a lot of exterior detail, not too much interior detail, but man, it sure look great on the outside. All right, let's take a look at the clear parts here. Let's see what we've got. All right, here we can see the, uh, the windows for the fuselage. The uh, the uh, star dome for the navigator to actually stick his head out and navigate at night. That was uh, one of the first uh, features that the DC-3 had was the uh, an actual external bubble so the navigator could uh, use a sextant uh, at night to uh, get a star fix. A stargazing dome is what they called it, I think. All right, the windscreen, a little bit of flash on the clear parts, but that's usually to be expected. You know, a little bit more on there than the uh, regular plastic. Uh, the uh, landing uh, landing lights, ports, and it looks like uh, doors, more. Okay. Well, all in all, not too bad. Not too bad for the glass part. I am really excited to... Uh, to build and paint this sucker up. I mean, with the exterior detail the way it is, it is going to look sharp. Yeah, okay. Well, enough uh, jaw jacking about that. Let's take a look again at the uh, details. And, you know, let's see, being, being a 100% USA kid and being uh, former army, I think I'm going to have to build the U.S. Sorry, guys. That's just a uh, favorite here. Uh, this one uh, looks like... Uh, okay, that's quite a bit of uh, missions there. It looks like there's a little bit more than just the D-Day. Um, according to this kit, uh, the U.S. variant, the Honey Bun 3, it saw its first tour of duty uh, during the uh, D-Day invasion. And then... Uh, went on to Market Garden and then further medic med evacs uh, during uh, the what was uh, left of World War II and then did some further research on it. Uh, that's why I'm excited to build the U.S. one is because not only did it see uh, tour, uh, service during D-Day, Market Garden and the rest of World War II, it saw service uh, in uh, the Berlin airlift of all uh, of all things, so this plane had been around for quite a long time. Uh, after it got done with the Berlin airlift service, it, we uh, sold it off to the French, and what did they do? They they scrapped it, poor thing. 
Uh, so that's why I'm going to build uh, build the U.S. version. I haven't debated, uh, decided if I'm going to do the full uh, the full market garden, but then again, you know, it's for the D-Day build. So I think what I'll do is I'll build it D-Day specific, and then once I'm de once it's done with the D-Day, uh, once we're done with the D-Day competition, I might add uh, add the decals later on to finish it out for its full uh, full market garden. But in any case, I am looking forward to uh, building the Douglas C-47A Skytrain as a troop carrier, uh, paratroop carrier for uh, Operation Overlord or uh, D-Day. So I will keep you posted on updates and uh, we'll uh, see you on the forums. History Rider out.